Hi everyone, welcome to Lead Code Programming. In this video, we will discuss about the problem check array formation through concatenation. So, let's look at the problem description. You are given an array of distinct integers array and an array of integer arrays pieces where the integers and pieces are distinct. So, basically, uh, the array that you are uh, having will be having uh, distinct integers at the same time, uh, the array of arrays, array of array integers that also will be having distinct integers so you have array and pieces so what we need to do is we need to form array by concatenating the arrays in pieces in any order that means I mean, we don't have to follow any particular order so we need to check if by using some order uh, from the arrays in pieces can we get the final array that we need to form so you are not allowed to reorder the integers in each array pieces of i that means uh, pieces will be having uh, different arrays so if you take an array there will be multiple integers in that so you cannot change the order of those integers so we need to check if we can form our final array using uh, different arrays in pieces so we need to return true if it is possible to form the array or we need to return false let's look at examples so that we can get more idea so let's say we have array 85 so we need to uh, finally arrive at the array 85 and we have pieces 85 so here we have only one array of integers so uh, by using uh, the array here 85 we can finally get array 85 so it is true because there is only one element in example 2 uh, we have array as 15 and 88 so we need to form the array 15 and 88 so the pieces that we have are 88 so there are two arrays here so one is having one element 88 the other is having uh, 15 so if we, we can use these arrays in any order but the elements inside one, one particular array, we should not change the order. So here if we use the pieces piece, uh, the second piece as first array, then we get 15. Then if we use the second array, then 88. So 15, 88, we are getting the final array, 15, 88. So it is true. In example 3, we have three elements in the final array, 49, 18, 16. Then we have only one integer array here, pieces. So 16, 18, 49. So uh, we need to form this array using only one integer array. Uh, if you look at uh, closely here, the elements in the integer array here pieces are same as the final array. Elements are same but the order is different and as you have seen before, you cannot change the order of these elements. So we need to, if you are going to use this array in our uh, array formation, you need to use in the same order. So the array that we can get by using this array is 16, 18, 14 but whereas we need an array of 49, 18, 16. So answer is false. In example 4, uh, we have 4 integers 91, 4, 64, 78, and we have 3 pieces. So, one is having 78, the second one is having 4, 64, the third one is having 91. 91. So, uh, to form the final array here, first we can uh, take the third array which is having 91, so then you get 91. Then, for 4 and 64, you use the second uh, piece, so you get so till now you got uh, 3 integers. Then, for the final uh, number 78, we use the uh, third uh, piece in fact the first piece which is having 78 so we can form the array using the three pieces that are given to us so answer is true so in example 5 uh, we have 1357 as our final array whereas the pieces are pieces we have one array having 2 4 6 8 so then the integers are completely different so we cannot get the final array using the given pieces so answer is false let's look at the constraints so the length of the pieces can be and array length can be between 1 and 100 so the number of integers that you have in your final array will be uh, between 1 to 100 and again uh, the length of pieces i mean length of all the pieces together will be equal to the final array length so you will have exactly same elements in array as well as uh, the total number of elements in pieces and the length length of each uh, length of each pieces will be less than your array length so if you have only one piece that means its length will be equal to array length if you have multiple pieces then length of each piece will be less than your array length obviously because we need to because array will be larger than the each piece and the value of element in, in array or in each piece it will be the value will be again between 1 to 100 so you will have integers between 1 and 100 you will not have beyond it. the integers in array are distinct that means you will not have any duplicate elements and again uh, the integers in pieces are again distinct if we 
yeah so if we flatten all the pieces in one day array that means if you uh, concatenate the pieces in any order all the elements in that uh, final concatenated array will be distinct so what should be our approach so if you look at the constraints it is uh, pretty small so the number of elements will be 100 so even if you come up with the naive approach or brute force approach o of n square or o of n, uh, n cube it's not going to time out so uh, probably we can uh, without complicating the things we can just try to do the uh, brute force way so let's uh, look at how we can do that so if you see the hints here note that the distinct part means that every position in the array belongs to only one piece note that you can get the piece uh, every position belongs to navely and uh, probably we can uh, try to get the brute force approach so let's look at one typical example let's take example of uh, this one we have three pieces here and we have four integers let's try to get one uh, simple approach so this is the input this is the array that we need to form so uh, basically we need to use the given pieces in any order and see if that uh, final form formation uh, formed array will be equal to the final result or not so basically you need to generate all the permutations so let's say uh, we have different permutations like 78 4 64 9 91 this is one permutation let's number them the next permutation will be 78 then use 91 before then 4 comma 64 this is one more permutation similarly we have 4 comma 64 78 91 then we have 4 comma 64 let's change the order here the next element so 91 and 78 this is one more permutation and finally we have 91 78 4 comma 64 91 4 comma 64 78 so these are the possible permutations so in this if you see 91 4 64 78 so that means sixth one sixth one is the, our answer so if you generate all possible permutations and check if any of the permutation is matching our final array that means we have uh, we can form the array so we can return true so this should be a straightforward approach i mean this is a brute force approach so let's see how we can do it in the code let's look at the code now let's look at both c++ and java so let's see c++ code first so uh, let's take one index so we need to uh, for every uh, how we are going to do this problem is uh, our goal is to form the array final array so we need to check every element of array if that element is uh, present in any of the pieces like uh, if that element is starting point of any of the pieces so when we get uh, some element as starting point of any of the pieces that means uh, the next elements in the pieces should be in the same order as in the given array so let's look at that so loop through the array till array size and let's take a boolean variable flag equal to false that means whether we have this uh, flag indicates that the given pieces are matching the given uh, array elements so for every piece we are uh, iterating through all the pieces the given pieces and check if the current element is uh, present in present as the starting point of any of the piece so we are comparing here so array of index the current element is equal to the first element of the current piece so if it is matching that means we have found a match for one of the pieces so we set our flag to true so if, if no piece that means all the pieces in this uh, pieces are not matching with the current element that means we don't have a match for the current element in that case flag will be false and we return false as final, final answer so when we get a match we set flag to true we increment our index and that means first element is already matching so that means current element of array is already matching with one of the pieces now we need to check the remaining elements from the same piece because they should be in the same order we cannot change the order of the elements so that's why we have a loop from one to size of the current piece then check all the elements if any of the element is not matching with the ele particular element then we return false because we cannot we cannot tolerate any change in the order that means every element in the piece should be matching with the 
elements of array in the CIM order. So we loop through this complete for loop, increment the index because this index will point to the array elements. So this way, uh, if you take one particular piece, all the elements in the piece will be matched with all the, uh, some of the elements in the array. Then we keep incrementing the index. And finally, whenever we get index equal to array dot size, we return true. That means we have found all the elements of the array. And if any time flag is false, that means for current element of array, we are not able to find match in any of the given pieces. So in that case, our answer will be false. So finally, if we find all elements from the array with all the pieces, then we return true. So let's execute and check. Yeah, it works fine. Let me submit. Yeah, 12 milliseconds faster than 17% because this is a brute force approach. So it will be a little bit slower, but it's fine. Considering the fact that the constraints are pretty small. So now let's look at the Java code. It will be same because we are not using any uh, specific language specific uh, APIs here. So the code will be almost similar. Let's walk through the Java code. So again here we have while loop, we have index to loop through the array elements. Then uh, for every here you can just check the difference in the syntax here. Syntax here. So uh, it will give each piece from the pieces. So it will be an array of integers. So let's check the first element here. Then we set the flag to true then increment index then check rest of the elements from the uh, current piece so if there is an if there is a if there is a mismatch at any point of time in the current piece then we return false same way whenever we reach uh, I'd index equal to array length we return true so here in c++ we use array dot size whereas in java we use array dot length and again when flag is false we return false finally we return true when we found all the elements so let's execute this as well and check Yeah, so test cases are passing. Let's submit and check it. Yeah, so one milliseconds and faster than 74% of the submissions. Let's look at the uh, time complexity. So uh, if the array is of size n, we are looping through the array elements. So it will be in the order of O of n plus we are looping through uh, all the pieces. So for every element, we are looping through all the pieces. So let's say there are uh, m elements in pieces together, uh, total m elements. So the uh, time complexity will be, so for every element of uh, array, we are looping m times in the worst case. So it will be in the order of O of n star m. So because the length of array or length of uh, pieces will be uh, less than 100, so it will not uh, go beyond 1044. That's why we are able to uh, come up with a brute force approach and in case if you want to optimize a little bit uh, further i would like to discuss one idea so that please try please try to implement yourself and check so here what we are doing is for every element from the array we are trying to uh, check if the element is starting point of any of the pieces so uh, for every element we are looping through all the pieces in the pieces array so instead of that what you can do you can pre-process the pieces elements from the pieces so there will be a one pre-processing so by pre-processing what you are going to do is uh, in pre-processing you can use some map that means uh, every uh, starting of starting element of every integer array from the pieces you store it in the map so whenever you want to find a starting point of all the pieces so let's say you are uh, you have current element of array of index you need to find if there is any piece matching this element so you use this element as a index into map that means key as a map and try to find the corresponding pieces array so that way you can reduce this for loop here so you can directly get uh, the starting point of a particular element from the pieces in o of n so in that case your solution will be in the order of o of n or if it is uh, m is if you say number of elements in pieces are m and m is greater than n it will be in the order of o of m so that way you can optimize this uh, a little bit but given the constraints uh, this solution also is uh, pretty fine so that's it for today uh, thanks for watching please do provide your feedback and uh, please subscribe thank you